Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training. Today's training is going to be on, let's just say it is not the most glamorous job in the world. It's going to be on cleaning the vent line of your gas dryer or your dryer. In my case it is a natural gas dryer and I'm going to clean the vent line. It's probably been at least a couple of years maybe even four years since the last time I cleaned my vent dryer. Some people clean these vent dryers twice a year, uh, but uh, at least annually would be a good uh, preventive maintenance uh, occurrence. Uh, I, I guess it's one of these jobs that you uh, really don't want to do, but you know, it's a uh, good, of course it's a good practice to prevent fires because a lot of home fires start in the, in the dryer vent. Uh, but uh, our prevailing root reason of doing it is we're noticing how much longer it is taking for our clothes to dry. Now, here's the setup right behind me. You can see right here I got the washer and dryer. For, this is my dryer over here and I got a cabinet chuck full of materials, uh, food storage items, so it weighs a ton here. So that's kind of like a pain I don't want to move. And for me to do the dryer, I have to first move the washer. So it's one of these jobs that you just kind of uh, put off until the last possible minute that you have to do it. Now, we're also going to be doing an unboxing and a review of this product right here. I just purchased this at the Home Depot. And it is the uh, Lint Eater Dryer Vent Cleaning System. I think it cost me $40.00. And you can see the uh, picture of a dryer and a girl there cleaning uh, with her drill the uh, dryer vent and then and then going with it right there. And it shows you a picture there before and after, although that's not really coming out well, but you can see how clogged it is before, how clogged it is after, and and everything like that. Alright, so let's go ahead and do some unboxing. All right, so I've got the system unboxed, and here's the parts that came with the kit for at the Home Depot for like forty dollars. So you get this um, adapter for your vac shop vacuum. Now I got my shop vacuum right here, and it normally my shop vac. I normally use it with this hose right here, but this hose when you put this on is, is not the right diameter. Now my shop vac came with another hose, uh, this one right here, I think it's a two inch diameter, and this one actually fits on perfectly, so I have to use the larger hose. So if you only have one shop vac hose, you might wanna watch that. There isn't a, a reducer that they supplied but even with this uh, hose, this reducer is still not the right diameter. So you could use a rag or something like that, but anyways, uh, I have the right hose, so I don't need to do that. So this here can go on the dryer, and then when you rotate and you put your extensions on, you know, they want you to, um, when you put these extensions on, you put them on, they want you to use duct tape around here, tighten it with a wrench, use some duct tape, and only use the drill when you're doing it with the drill and only do that clockwise. That way it's always making this connection here tight, tight, tight. So you never want to go clockwise, possibly unloosening this inside of the chase. Um, and it also came with this uh, auger tool set of instructions, so to you know give you really good instructions. And it's got two brushes. This brush here, if you, when you use this brush, which also has the ability to go on one of these, that you they don't want you to use this one with the drill. With the drill is a no-no. Just this one is just by hand. And this here is the uh, dryer blower adapter is what they're calling it. They want you to put this on the dryer to, so when you go backwards with this tool you want to make sure it does not enter the dryer. That's what this is for, to prevent it from entering the dryer. So, now here's a couple of tools that I had, not part of this kit. I bought these on my own. This one here to, to get the inside the lint trap. And then this one here is the one that I was using in the past. What I would do is I would take a broom handle, put it here, duct tape it together, and I could uh, rod it in. But I'm hoping with this setup it'll be a little bit more efficient. 
Now, one of the other things that you can do instead of using a shop vac is you can use a leaf blower as another way to help move the airflow. All right, so basically that's the unboxing of this and a little bit about that. All right, that. so by the way, here is the model number and serial number of the uh, Samsung dryer I'm working on, just in case you're the type of person that likes to know these types of things. So there's the dryer, and over here is the washing machine, and there's the sticker on that for that washing machine mo model number. Now what I'm going to okay. do is I'm going to put the dryer on. I got it set on a, on a low setting there and I'm going to turn it on and then go outside and see how much airflow we have. So I'm just going to come over here. It's on right now. There's nothing in it so I'm just going to go outside now and let's see how much airflow we got. Here is where my vent discharges. You can see it's already partially clogged. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to feel how much airflow is coming out now. And it's kind of hard to judge this. I don't have a way to measure this. But I'm going to pull this off, pull these rocks away, and I'm going to clear this whole thing out really well. And I'm going to, of course, clean this up. This is clogged up pretty good, so I definitely had partial air a uh, good blockage right here but I want to do a full thorough cleaning on this while I while I'm working on it so that's just to get my starting point to show you where we're uh, where we're ultimately going to be going but we're pretty clogged just from this thing here that would have helped I should have done that and I didn't all right my next step is is I want to get this cleared off. I want to get all this, these, this, this washer out of here. I want to get back of this dryer. I want full access to this dryer. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that access, move that washing machine and everything like that. So All right, you can see I pulled the washing machine out, disconnected the drain hose unplug the machine from the electrical. Uh, it's awfully dirty back here. While I got this all apart, I'm going to clean it up. I disconnected the water hose. A little bit of water, you know, drains on the floor. The hoses are just sitting there dangling. You know, these are just the hoses that I disconnected from the machine. So they're just dangling. They drained out. Now that I got that, and I just for safety shut the uh, gas valve off right there. Now I can uh, pull this machine out and get it out a little bit pulled it out somewhat and now my my hose there is stretched as far as I feel comfortable with stretching it and I want to get really good access to this area so I can put my shop vac and stuff here so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect here there's a hose clamp right there and um, I'll go ahead and disconnect the uh, natural gas line as well just so that I can uh, uh, I've already unplugged it so that way I can pull this dryer out fully 100% and have good access to this area. Alright, so here's the machine pulled out. I got nice easy access to where it connects into the wall. And I disconnected the, uh, the line that goes from the wall to the machine. Then, as long as I did that, I just grabbed my flashlight here. And I'm just kind of looking uh, down here to see if there's anything of uh, value in there to see if there's any blockages or whatnot the machine here looks pretty clean anyways there it is right there looks pretty that chute is definitely clean now when I disconnected this over here let me show you what I found so I disconnected this and when I looked inside you see that? That is some type of uh, rodent droppings I can see there, like pellets. Definitely like a rodent has been, uh, I don't know, somebody was in here at some point in time. There's no rodent in here now, but uh, that's, and the line is not actually clogged that much, but anyways, I see rodent droppings there now. I do wish that when they built this house 40 years ago that they exited here with a solid uh, metal. But it's not. It's more like a, a rubber. 
a flexible uh, deal there. And then that goes into the wall here. And then when you're looking inside, you can see more droppings. And then what happens is, is it goes in about 24 inches and then it turns right to exit the house. So we're going to definitely shop back up all of this, of course. Try to get all those droppings and everything like that. And then clean the run out. Alright, so that's what I'm on right now. Okay, so just using my shop vac with just this, not even using that lint cleaning brush toolkit thing there, I was able to thoroughly clean the inside of this. This is 100%. Let me uh, see if I can get the brush light here so you can see that. Hold on. It's a little, it's a little hard that I'm not three-handed. All right, maybe you can see it like that. Okay. Anyways, all the lint drop, all the mice droppings. This this whole thing's like 100% clean. Okay. Now, looking inside of here. Look at this. Look at that. Hold on. Look at that. That is 100% clean from from as far as I can get it. It makes it right there. It makes a 90 degree turn. I can't make that bend, so I have to grab that from the other side. Okay, so what you can see is I've got my shop vac that's set on blower mode. If you want suction mode on this shop vac, you got to put your hose here. But I got it on blower mode, so it's going to blow out here, out my two inch hose. I put that adapter kit thing on. There's a plug there where you can put the rod in. And then I cinch that up with my, um, with my screwdriver. So that's on nice and tight. So now, when you blow, when you turn this on, is blowing out here into there and blowing that way out out of the house now we're gonna grab the rest of the uh, the run on the outside there so that's where we're off to next I'm gonna turn this on and get set up outside this here is what it sounds like on this side literally sounds like a jet engine let me see if I can figure out how much airflow is coming out of there Uh, so I spent five minutes rotting this out. I did not need that extra extension piece because my um, length of this pipe right here only went in two and about a half uh, sections of the extension rod. Um, just looking at the on the ground here, you can kind of see how much uh, lint pulled out. I would not say that that was a tremendous amount of lint. I'd say the smoking gun right now was that right there. And the fact that I'm missing one louver, maybe this is where that mouse got in. So I'm going to look at purchasing another one of these 
um, vent covers for the house something that the uh, mice and rodents cannot get in. And of course I'm going to clean that up really well which I have not done yet. But since I've got my shop vac all hooked up on blowing now I'm just going to take it and reverse it to suction and rod it out again since I've got my setup right here. By the way I started out with the drill on speed one. <laughs> I started out with when I first started this out I started out with the drill on number speed one then I went to speed two and I think that was more productive. I was afraid speed two might uh, might uh, uh, cause damage but I don't think it's any damage. I, I feel it's pretty clean but just while I got my setup all done like this I'm just gonna change my shop back around okay back in the garage I'm gonna take this from blower mode uh, I had to put the camera down I was stuck on there I couldn't do it went one-handed anyways I took it off blower mode it's on suction mode I'm gonna turn this thing on now, it's on suction mode. now we're gonna rot it out again on suction mode Alright, I want to show you what this looks like, if I can. I got my flashlight here. And, alright, so the line, oh, hold on, okay, there's the line right there. And on the bottom of the line, you can see there's a little bit of dirt build up. And I'm going to see if I can't clean that out with the shop vac. So I'm going to get my shop vac over here right now. This, this um, earth is slightly below grade right there, but I'm thinking that when it rained, it must have gone in there with water and stuff. So what I'm going to end up doing uh, to further prevent this from happening is I'm going to take this river rock, scoot that away, and I'm going to dig down some of the earth, and I'm going to get this more below grade and then bring in some more river rock so there's absolutely no dirt right there but just rock so this way if there if, if uh, I'm just I just want this whole thing to be below grade so I'm gonna take some earth away from here just to get that down but I'm gonna get my shop vac over here right now alright I got the shop vac out here I cleaned this this is what came out of that I cleaned this really well so you can see this is all free and clear now, but I still want to buy another one because I'm missing that top louver grill and I said there was mouse droppings in there. And now let's take a look down that. Okay, there we go. Now it's a little hard to see to get everything perfect here for you, but I was able to clean that up and make it a lot better. Uh, can only see so well down the pipe. There you go. That's probably the best shot you're going to get. Uh, but uh, we're fine, so we're good on this end. This pipe is 100% clean. The next step is to go to the machine. Okay, so for now, I'm just going to put this vent cover back on because it's the only one I got. And I do need to come back here and do the rock project and and get this below grade a little bit more. So that's on my to that's also needs to be done. But I want to attack the dryer first so I can get that back operational. Okay, now we're back to the inside. So I just removed the uh, shop vac hose from from the uh, the dryer vent uh, wall outlet right there, and I and I looked inside with the flashlight, made sure everything was good and clear. Then I go ahead and put this on. That's ready to go ahead and attach to this uh, dryer right here. Now, before we uh, do that, I want to go into the dryer here now, and I want to look inside of here and see what's going on. So obviously I got the dryer vent. I want to clean this up here, which I'm going to do. But I also want to clean inside of that track there. Let me see if I can show you. Okay, so I got the flashlight here. So you can see inside. Basically, it does not look that bad, okay? But as long as I'm going through all this energy, I want to get this thing cleaned 100%. And I don't feel like taking the door apart and taking the taking all this apart because uh, that that would take another at least another half hour now I've got this tool here that came with the kit that I put a little I just bent with my hand put a little hook on it and I had purchased that already earlier now 
what I did was I took my shop vac and I attached with duct tape the part that was I had used to blow out the house that way now I'm going to use it to blow into here and into the drum while I'm cleaning this out to try to get this to push out of this area so I'm going to use both tools so uh, that's what I am going to do right now let's see how well that's All right, you can kind of see how much stuff I got out of here, just on the ground, the lint out of here and there. Let me turn this light on. So there's a bunch of lint in the dryer. I got to vacuum that up. But the area that I have wanted to clean, which was this, look at how spotless that is now. I really got that well. So I'm just going to take my shop vac and I'm going to disconnect it and clean all this up right now. All right, I used the shop vac hose to uh, get everything nice and clean. So you can see the uh, dryer, I, I vacuumed out all the lint and everything. But now what I'm gonna do is I took the uh, shop vac and I put it, instead of on blowing mode here, I'm back to suction mode. Since I still have that taped up, I'm just gonna clean it one more time in suction mode, but instead of pushing it out this way, it's gonna go in that way. Uh, ironically enough, when I disconnected my shop vac hose from the connection, my smaller hose, it broke. It, the, the, the hose was already trashed because it had a crimp in it right there. I just duct taped it. Uh, now I'm definitely going to have to buy a new one because now it's just completely trashed. Oh well. Alright, so what I'm going to do is turn the shop vac on suction and just clean one more time with the brushes, but this time sucking in. All right, that's pretty good. And I just tried to really go through, there's a, there's a screen right here that the venting process goes through and I just tried to clean that up. A little bit of debris came up, so I'll, I'll shop vac that up in a second. Um, okay, so now pretty much just about done. The last thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and clean this. Okay, if you're like me and you use those bounce dryer sheets I'm going to put water on here to see if it flows through or if it spreads out. Alright, that's not too bad. It is kind of flowing right through. You kind of see it there. But I know that these can build up a, a uh, I'm not sure what the term is, like a, like a membrane to prevent airflow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this brush, put a little bit of hand soap on it, and take this and just clean it, both sides. I like that. Alright, now, notice the water, I don't know if you can see how much easier that's flowing through. There's that membrane I was telling you about, it's really been broke, did this, that cleaning for just a minute. Uh, really helps this thing work. You can see that. So this is uh, definitely something you want to do when you use, especially when you use the dryer sheets like I use. Okay, so I'm just going to dry this out and uh, this can go back. Alright, so I took the um, 
the, uh, the lint screen and I just simply took a paper towel, dried it off, so this is 100% ready to go back in. And I'll just go ahead and put that back in. That's good to go. Wipe down my, my um, dryer a little bit because it's got a little dirty. And I'm just going to wrap things up on the other side and put this thing back in, uh, in place. All right, so while I'm back here, just getting ready to put this machine back in service, you can see this, there's some Luva grills here. So I just took my shop back, since it's right here, already on suction mode, and although that piece was broken and I couldn't use it, I just took this piece here and held it with my hand and just, and just went through and sucked all this out. And I just cleaned out the, uh, the back of the machine like 100% as, as good as I could get it. And then just uh, ran the, uh, the shop back down here once just to uh, give that um, uh, a cleaning. And as long as I'm right here, I'll just give it a last inspection. As far as this, this is 100% clean, so we're good to go there. And um, that's it. So I'm pretty much just going to uh, bring the machine back over to here, connect that up, put the power on, and get this thing back up. And then the same thing with the wash. Okay, so here's the machine. I just uh, put on the uh, aluminum uh, flexible hose, tighten that up right there with the hose clamp with this um, uh, six in one screwdriver. And I attached it at the uh, natural gas line using the double wrench technique, holding one section with the wrench while tightening that one. And I turned on the natural gas. Now I'm pretty sure that there's no leak, but I want to just do a verification. So what I've got here is I just got some water, some palm olive uh, soap, and a paper towel. So I'm going to put some soap and water on that connection to see if there's any bubbles. So I'm, just I'm going to do that right some now. some water, and I'm just taking some soap. Come on, soap. All right, putting some soapy water in here. And now I'm just going to saturate this area here with soapy water. And I'm just trying to see if there's any bubbles. Uh, from a leak and of course I don't smell any natural gas anyways but I'm just trying to do a leak check while I'm right here everything looks good I don't see any leak there at all so I'm pretty satisfied with that as long as I'm here with a leak check I still have some soapy water here I'm just checking this connection this connection uh, any connection here where there's possibly anything where there's a leak just to see if there's anything there as long as I'm here with the with the rag and some soapy water I just test it out but everything looks solid no leaks good to go there I checked those those ones back there too so I checked that whole section at once all right pretty much I got this dryer Connected. Make sure that the lines aren't pinched. Everything is connected back. It's uh, plugged in. Gas valve is on. And pretty much the dryer is just, it's on and it's good to go. I've already cleaned out the dryer uh, lint screen as you saw. So this, that, pretty much that concludes that job right there. Now, while I'm putting the washing machine back, I was just taking the shop vac. I shop vac up the back of the machine because it was pretty dusty. These were the, this is where the water lines connect onto. Now the C, which is for cold, and they give you a blue color here. And then this one here is for hot, and it's like an orange color. There's this little strainers in there. I just noticed those. And the hot one uh, looked like it was just it had a small buildup on it. So I'm just going to take, uh, let's see here, take these pair of pliers here. And just before I go through the trouble of reconnecting that, I'm just going to gently twist this. Let's see how that comes out. I'm hoping it does. And I got to put All the right, camcorder down. Let's see if this thing down. comes out. It's coming out, but it's, it's kind of protesting me. All right. It's not that bad. There's a little bit of dirt build up there. Now this looks like there's a secondary screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and take both of these out and 
and as long as I got my shop vac and everything, I'm just going to sit here and clean these up and uh, and get those get those really nice. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, I just went through, used my uh, shop vac, and there's a little screwdriver right there. I used that very gently and went through and just cleaned out and sucked out. Uh, both of these uh, in, uh, interior secondary screens. Then I also went, the cold water one was already fine, but the hot water one had some calcium buildup, so I just went and did, brought it to the sink and, and cleaned it out so that that's 100%. So now this one and this one can be put back in. And I'll just put these back in the way that I found them, which is pretty much like that. That's it. Alright, so now I can go ahead and put this uh, washing machine uh, back. Alright, here's the back of the machine. Hooked up the cold side, which I labeled with the blue hose earlier, to the cold side here. Hot side connected here. Went hand tight, and then I just gave it a small cinch up with a pair of pliers. Opened up the valves over there. Put the drain line down and I just use a zip tie just to help keep that drain line secured so when the machine turns on and drains it doesn't pop out of the drain line and go all over the place. So I went ahead and did that and I just have to plug it in and I'm ready to push it back. Okay everything's put back but as long as I'm into this project I just want to uh, get the, dry, the washing machine just a, a service done on that. And the uh, manufacturer recommends that you do this once a month, which I never do, but that's what they recommend. There's a uh, hose inside of here, and they want you to drain that down. Oh, let's see. So I'm going to drain that down, and then there's a cap here I can pull off, and this is a lint, there's a screen inside of here that I want to um, clean off as well. Uh, I'm a little, I like things to go as fast as possible, so I'm just going to shop back this up. Alright, so this is what it looks like. So there's this here that goes inside of here and it's just screwed in there, it's just screwed in there tight. This, you can see the debris that is uh, right there, I didn't suck it out yet. Looks like it's some leaves and stuff like that. So I'm going to just go ahead and suck that out and then clean this up. You can see inside of here there's a, there's a little bit of restriction, calcium and magnesium uh, build up. I'll run that under the sink, get this nice and spick and span before I put it back. And then that's it. Oh, and then that's one thing. And then one other thing I think I'm going to do, this um, door, it looks kind of uh, clouded. This... Uh, glass is kind of clouded. I think I'm just going to give that a cleaning just so I can see through the machine a little bit better because it looks clouded. I'm going to work on that right now. Okay, so right now this is cleaned up. These are the tools that I used. Just a brush, greenie pad, and a small uh, flat tip screwdriver. Here, now all the volutes on this are 100% uh, clean. You can see through them real well. Uh, so this is 100% clean. Inside of here, that is all nice and clean as well. And I've already put the cap back on here, which goes tucked in like this, around like that. Actually, there's two spots where it connects on. One's there and one's there, like that. And then this thing here, you just put that in and then just turn it and it's just supposed to go hand tight. There's a uh, uh, some type of a gasket there. Right about like that, should be fine. And then as far as the door goes, it's like that, like like that. So that's, that's that. Now I'm just gonna put forth a little bit of energy trying to see if I can remove this haze off of there. Okay, you can see in the machine a little bit nicer. Uh, I got some spray cleaner right there. I'm just going to uh, 
take that with some paper towels and just wipe down uh, both machines right now. All right, so my review of the Lint Eater Rotary Drying Vent Cleaning System is I like it. I am glad I made the purchase. Let's see if there's a model number here. Don't know what that is. Sorry, um, but anyways, it, it's a uh, it's a good it's a it's a good tool. This particular one that I got is the uh, the ten piece. It was like forty dollars at the Home Depot, and I'm glad that it came with uh, the piece that you can attach to the um, to the vent line with the with my uh, shop vac. That was the that was the tool, tool that the more inexpensive kits did not All have. Right, I'll so put I do a recommend link that. in the description of this video for that particular model that I purchased for the lint eater. Um, now one pro one thing that I need to do is I do need to change out my dryer vent exiting the house because that one allowed a little mouse to come in at one point in time so I'm going to buy a new one for that. Uh, and I also want to regrade that to put it a little bit lower uh, so that way if there's a flooding going on here it doesn't rise up that water level and bring some dirt into there. And I'll try to bring in some more rocks rather than dirt to try to so that uh, it's not going to be dirt that rises up it'll just be plain water not dirt, dirty water or muddy water. So that's my intention. I hope you like this video. Uh, go ahead and click on like and if you'd like to you can subscribe to my channel Ken Training. That's it for this one. We're wrapping it up. Goodbye and good luck with your project.